Hey everybody, Bob Weeks from TSN here at Golf Town, and look who I found. He's been uh, working in the back here, Mike Weir, major champion. Mike, yeah. welcome to Golf Town. Yeah, thanks. And you actually were helping out here. You were, uh, which we got a little video, which you, you can go to the Facebook.com uh, page, uh, webpage, and check it out a little later. It's going to be up there, I think, probably the next couple of days or so. It's really, really fun. Mike was here helping people out, <laughs> getting fit, uh, buying some balls. You were some cash. I saw you putting some. Stuff I was in trying. Bag. I was trying my best. <laughs> so. Uh, well, welcome to Golf Town. Welcome yeah. back to Canada. I know Thanks. you're uh, you're always uh, happy to be back here. Yeah. Um, I want to start talking a little bit about equipment because it's mm -hmm. that time of year, and a lot of people are thinking about what kind of new gear they want to put in their bag. And you've mm -hmm. made some decisions, I know, to get some uh, some new TaylorMade stuff yes. going on. And the big thing, of course, with TaylorMade this year is M3 or M4, and there's some choices yeah. to be made. What did you make? Yeah. So far, um, what I've been testing, the M3 is getting. Uh, the best results when I get on the uh, launch monitor and things and um, you know, I'm getting the most consistent ball flight out of it and um, so yeah I'm using I'm using the 790 irons M3 uh, driver I'm in the M4 fairway woods I found those to be the best they launch a little higher for me okay. so it's great to come down and, and golf town and experiment you know and try the different things and see the l different launches and conditions you're getting and you never know you know so for a certain person you might with the M4 you might get a little more ball speed and the right launch that you want so um, I've been able to find a good combo so far. We were talking just before we started this about how on, even on the PGA Tour there's kind of a 50-50 split between players using M3 and M4 so it's yep. I mean a lot of it's personal preference but I guess a lot of it also comes down to the importance of cut. Try this M4 but he might be a high launcher or something and you might hit a little lower and flatter so it's really important to get in and get these guys to to help you here at Golf Town and, and get you in the right thing for your swing your in your swing speed and you know, your angle of attack and all those things that they, you know, even if you don't want to dive into that stuff, these experts here can, you know, kind of fit you. Now, you're, you've been known over the years to be a bit finicky when it comes to your equipment, which it obviously is the tools of your trade. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to kind of make the switch and get the stuff into your bag? Well, right away, you know, irons have always been quite particular about, and right away when I saw the 790s, you know, I was using the 770s last year, and as soon as I saw the 790s, and then once... You know, obviously, I like to. The first things first, got to look good, got to feel good in your hands. But then the, the launch conditions, I was getting a little higher launch, which I've always hit the ball a little bit lower. So I was getting the ball up in the air a little bit further, or a little bit higher, and I was getting a little bit more distance on, through the bag with all the irons. So, you know, in this day and age, you know, we're all looking for a little extra length. And, yeah. uh, you know, for me, you know, if I can hit, you know, a seven iron with my old clubs, you know, 165, and now I'm getting it up to 170. Um, just through technology, you know, it's just four or five yards and you get in the longer clubs, maybe I'm hitting a five iron, you know, seven or eight, nine, nine yards further. So it makes a difference. Uh, so important lesson for everyone out there who's in the market for new equipment, no matter what you buy, get custom fit, which mm -hmm. they can do for you, of course, at Golf Town. Uh, let's talk about your year and what's going on. Boy, in the last year, I was just looking this morning about, you have racked up some frequent flyer miles, my friend. <laughs> I, mean, I have, I have yeah. Austria, Australia, South Africa, Portugal, mm -hmm. uh, Italy, Italy uh, the United States, Canada, obviously. Yeah. You've been all over the I world have, a couple times. Like, yeah. well, that's, that's pretty, I mean, I'm sure that's tiring, but it's also fun. But, but yeah. just tell us kind of where you are with your game right now and, and what we can look forward to seeing you. Yeah, last year was quite busy with the travel schedule. It won't be <laughs> quite uh, like that, but it was actually fun. It was fun to do that, you know, and, and uh, enjoy at this stage in my game to enjoy different cultures and go around and I didn't wasn't just at the golf course I was enjoying the cities that I was playing in and that was, that was a lot of fun um, this year um, I don't have a lot up until well up until the Masters I have the Dominican Republic coming up event right. uh, which is a new PGA Tour event and then the Masters and then after that <clears throat> there's a category on tour when you turn 48 what? which is coming up <laughs> yeah uh, I, I'll have uh, access to the web.com tour which uh, I plan to play quite a bit and uh, See how my game, if it keeps going, trending in the right direction, I'll, I'll try to get you know that top 25 on that tour, get your PGA Tour card for next year. So that's May 12th kind of cool. is the birthday, and I know yep. that because there's three great golfers born on May 12th: you, Jim Furyk, and my dad. Okay, <laughs> okay yeah. <laughs> he might be the third. He might not quite be in a great category, but uh, <laughs> uh, but but uh, that is a um, obviously a place where you can go and play, and, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you have your eyes set a little bit further down the road too, probably yeah. for the Champions Tour. I do. You know, I, I look forward to that as well, and. Uh, I was talking to Michael Grange a little bit earlier today. I was just telling him, you know, I, you know, in my head, you know, I'd love to get in that top 25 and get you know, on the PGA Tour and see where see where that leads. But if not, uh, if uh, you know, if, if I play that web.com and get just get ready for the Champions Tour at 50, you know, that's that's important too because you have to be sharp out there. And, and the guys are shooting great scores and they're great players. And there's a great class going. And when I turn 48, Mickelson's 
uh, 50 the same year, Jim Furyk, Ernie yeah. Ellis, yeah. I think Gooses as well. So, um, you know, there's a lot of us uh, right around the corner from that. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier when you get older. I mean, no, it's, it's, no, it's these still, guys are still playing some good golf. Uh, you've shown some good signs. I know Pebble Beach, you had two, good, two really good rounds mm -hmm. out there. Do you feel like you're sort of starting to see some results? I do, yeah. I, I mean, uh, in Australia, you know, pl played well. I'm, I'm shooting a lot more rounds in the 60s now in competition, which I hadn't done in a while. And it's starting to... You know, really feel good. My powers come back, um, and uh, yeah, I just need the. You know, you hear Tiger say this all the time: the reps, right? You need to get out there and and, and play and put it under the gun, and and I think that's going to be important once I get on that web.com tour. That I can play a number of weeks in a row. Right now, set it's up been a schedule. Yeah, set up the schedule. I played a couple weeks, and then I had you know six weeks off. Played one week, three weeks off. It's hard to get in a bit of a rhythm. So, um, you know, once that date comes around, I'll hopefully get in a bit of a playing rhythm and but I feel really good about my game. We have a tournament coming up uh, that you know a little bit about uh, the Masters. Yeah. <laughs> Does that ever get boring to go and think about driving down Magnolia Lane? Never. Never. <laughs> in fact, I'm going there later this week. Uh, wow. I'm going to be like Thursday, Friday. Uh, once I leave Toronto uh, tomorrow, Need a force. tomorrow night, <laughs> we got four lined up. Unfortunately, we see. I don't think they'll let us play five. Though. No, darn. <laughs> but um, you know, yeah, it never gets old. I love, I love playing the event. It, um, you know, it's, it's such a world class event and, and great venue. It has great memories for me. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Adam Hadwin, the only other Canadian in the field at the moment. Maybe we'll get mm -hmm. another one. There's still some time, but. Yep. You had a, a good experience with him at President's Cup. Uh, you were the assistant captain, and he was one of the players in there. What kind of role do you see yourself playing now for some of those guys like Adam? Like maybe you could play a practice round with him at Augusta and do something mm -hmm. for him there. Or yeah, I mean it's really it's all up to those guys and how much you know. I'm always open to talk and, and lend whatever I can to uh, to their game and. Um, if they have any questions, I always tell them that. So it's really up to those guys if they want to uh, get, use me, <laughs> use me for, for advice on certain things and maybe little tidbits of knowledge. You know, I was a big advocate of that when I first got on tour. My college golf coach always said, you know, go up to the guys, the best players in the tour, and try to have lunch with them and learn from them. And I was never afraid to do that. You know, I, from the first time I got on the PGA Tour, you know, go sit down with BJ Singh or Mark O'Meara or Nick Price and introduce myself. And then if, they're, if I saw them on the driving range, and then, I, then I had that in to go over there and say, excuse me, you know, I really love what you're doing here. Do you mind talking about that? And, and you know, I picked up many things in my game that, you know, really propelled me to climb the ladder on the PGA Tour through experience with, with great players. I was uh, at the LA Open a couple weeks ago and <clears throat> watching Ben Silverman, who actually worked at a golf town before he mm. was a PGA Tour player, which is a great story. Yeah. And he played nine holes with Adam Scott and nine holes with Dustin Johnson. So that's Perfect. probably not bad. That's great. That's, that's great. pretty good stuff. Yeah. Um, 15 years since you won that tournament. Does it seem like that long? <laughs> Sometimes it does. Sometimes it feels that long. Other times when I, when I get on the grounds and get playing. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I can't, it's hard to believe that it's been 15 years. <laughs> anything, anything still sort of stand out from that week or that moment or that last Sunday? Yeah, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, I think of, um, well, I think of the, the whole week was kind of, you know, there was a lot of rain. The weather was bad. It was... It, you know, course played extremely long. Uh, I remember coming up after, after the playoff and the sun coming out and people singing "O Canada" when the, uh, the ceremony was taking place um, by the putting green, 18th green. After that's a, that's a pretty strong memory still. But obviously, the putt I made on 18 is the the thing that stands out the most. It's you know, neat you know. to it's neat to talk to the guys like Hadwin, Mackenzie Hughes, Ben Silverman, uh, David Hearn, Gray Villette, and, and find out where they were when you wanted to tell to mm -hmm. hear their stories about how inspiring it was that you've sort of brought this next generation. I asked Brooke Henderson about that, who's also a golf town athlete. Mm -hmm. She was only five, though. So she doesn't <laughs> remember, so you, right. that'll make us both feel pretty, right. pretty old. Right. Uh, just before we go, let's wrap up with a couple of quick uh, non-golf-specific okay. questions. And, and right. uh, give me your take on what you see from the hockey world. I know your Detroit Red Wings are mm. maybe struggling a little bit. They got rid of Thomas <laughs> Tatar. They got rid of Tom. We got a Red yep. Wings fan in the back, Thomas Tatar. So, I mean, uh, are you surprised at that? Yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but still at the same time, I think they really do need to rebuild a little bit and uh, and make some moves for the future. You know, they were 
you know, they made the playoffs all those number of years, and uh, but the last couple of years they barely limped in, <laughs> and the uh, last couple of years have been a little bit tough. So it's time to time to make some changes. And uh, I think the Leafs can actually do something. I do. I think you know. I think t I've watched that. Uh, I've watched the Leafs quite a bit. I have the NHL package when I'm home in Utah, <laughs> and I do flip through and and watch uh, not only the Wings, I watch the Leafs, and uh, you know they're a fun team to watch. And I think they can really uh, make some noise this year. You were at the Raptors game last night. Uh, yeah. Can you dunk the ball? No. <laughs> How big I, are those guys? I, I used to be able to get close to the rim, maybe, <laughs> in my heyday, not, but not quite touch it, but I wouldn't even get close now. But those guys are huge. They're phenomenal athletes. And, Did you have uh, a chance to meet any guys? Uh, any I didn't. No, no, no. I Just, just the just, Raptor. Yeah, just the Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I had a little bet with uh, Sheppy, my agent, see if I could get one of those foam balls up into the top <laughs> roof. I didn't quite, the uh, top section, but I didn't get it up there. But um, no, it was fun. Fun to sit courtside and see those guys. Uh, we just came through the Olympics. Anything stand out for you? Did you get a chance to spend some time watching it a little bit? And any yeah. events stand out or any yeah. athletes? Uh, well, quite a few. I mean, you know, obviously proud of the, the Canadian team. You know, 29 medals this year. Yeah. 11 golds, was it? I think. Uh, a whole bunch. Some, something like that, right? So it's it, it was quite quite uh, inspiring. And, um, you know, obviously uh, Tessa and Scott, again, you know, I, I gotten to know them over the years. I haven't seen them in a long time, but that was great to see them uh, back that up again and get that done. If you could compete in any sport in the Olympics, Winter Olympics, what would it be? Oh boy, obviously I would have loved to have been a hockey player, so play <laughs> hockey, but if anything else, maybe the downhill. I think, yeah, I think downhill, um, I think I'd, back in my younger days, maybe I'd have the stomach for it, but... Um, <laughs> I think you should maybe do like go curling or something. That would be more your speed these days. <laughs> yeah, now these days, for sure. Uh, we want to say, we're going to wrap it up here now. If you're going to be yep. uh, at Golf Town, or you're going to go to the Golf Town website, you can see the video of Mike helping people out. It's really fun. He did, he did a lot of good jobs. He actually put the receipt <laughs> in the bag. I saw that at see the end that? of the day. We got all sorts of stuff here at Golf Town. You're going to be here. If you're in the neighborhood and you're watching this uh, at the Laird store here, you can come out. Uh, Mike's going to sign some autographs for a bit. And uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks, Bob. Hey, hi, Michelle. We said hi to Michelle. Yeah, hey, Michelle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. All right.